Let's take you to South Australia now. It was just a couple of days ago we spoke to the South Australian Premier and he joins me now once again. Peter Malinowskis, thank you for your time. Uh, we anticipated uh, the deal. I think you were pretty bang on with the, the details and what this means for South Australia, Adelaide in particular. Does this change anything today, this announcement? Any update? Well, I guess the, the news that we were wrapped to have confirmed this morning, Laura, was the federal government's commitment to maintain the Life of Type extension program to the Collins-class submarine, because that's worth between 1,000 and 1,300 jobs here at Osborne effectively now. So that is good news, particularly when, of course, you combine with all the other eye-watering numbers that we're starting to hear this morning. The fact that we've got to have 4,000 people working down at Osborne just to build the submarine construction yard, and that's before the five and a half thousand direct people employed to build the nuclear submarines. It's a it's a massive undertaking. But I guess ultimately, as we sort of discussed that the other morning, from our perspective, what matters here is the opportunity for a step change to improve the state and indeed the nation's economic complexity, mm. which leads to better jobs, better wages, and of course improving people's standard of living. 20,000 jobs, that's what we talked about last week, created over the next 30 years or so. How many of those are in South Australia? Is it the lion's share? Well, the most significant proportion of which I think inevitably will be here in South Australia because this is where we're building the nuclear submarines. Obviously, there'll be some work for Western Australians as well in a significant volume, but here in our state, uh, to have 5,500 people directly employed not just building something, but actually building the most complex machine that has ever been constructed in the history of humanity. It, it, it's hard to get your head around. Mm -hmm. And what that means in terms of the skills uplift that will be required in our state is very substantial indeed. And that's why the work really does have to start now about developing that workforce that will be required in the decades ahead. Yeah, the skills uplift, as you put it, it's uh, going to need to be on quite a steep trajectory, isn't it? How will that happen? Will you be uh, sending um, already trained engineers to the United States or the UK for training? Will they come here? How will that uh, play out over the next four years or so? So we understand there'll be workers, um, a significant number of which from, are from South Australia, that will go to start working in both the US and UK to observe their nuclear sh um, shipbuilding uh, production facilities mm. um, ahead of you know, working at those here in South Australia. But it's also about our young people. I mean, and, I mean this language is often used by, by politicians, but the fact that there are children in, in school today, Laura, who we know that will be required to work on this program means we've got to start investing in them now. Mm. Uh, that's why we've committed to building five brand new technical colleges in our high schools. Um, that's why we're going to start to see more young people, particularly young female students, taking up uh, STEM subjects. All of these things will actually matter because in five, six, seven years' time, they will be the workforce of tomorrow. But in the immediate future, it's about constructing the shipyards, we've got the skills to be able to do that, and then also starting to take some of our existing um, naval shipbuilding mm. workforce, putting them in the US and UK so they can come back here sooner rather than later. The President, Joe Biden, you would have seen this morning, was at pain to, to point out, and I think he needed to do this, that these are nuclear-powered submarines, not nuclear-armed. But yeah. do you think this changes the debate at all in Australia about nuclear power? Um, where are you thinking where this goes. Do you think if Australia, and particularly South Australia, is going to be the manufacturing uh, base for these nuclear submarines, is the extension of that, the logical extension in South Australia, you at least talk about having some kind of domestic nuclear power? Okay, well, there's a couple of elements to that. So the answer to your question, if I had to put it succinctly, would be both yes and no. So yes, I do think that building nuclear submarines here in South Australia will help serve the purpose of a more rational debate around the role of nuclear energy uh, globally. I think here in Australia we've had a, uh, a mindset that has been uh, adverse to, to nuclear science in a way that I don't think has done our country any good. So I, I think this program helps change that narrative. That'll be positive. But in respect to 
any realistic proposition that this somehow translates into a nuclear energy industry here in, in South Australia or Australia, I think is, is simply not true because the economics tells us that building nuclear and power stations in Australia would actually make our, our electricity prices a lot more expensive than what is currently the case. So I, I don't see there being any appetite to make energy more expensive than what it already is. But I do think that rationality should be what dominates these considerations. Look at the science, look at the facts, and then make considered judgments. And when we do that, we're, we're better for it as a nation, and I hope that this project, the submarine project, helps serve that purpose. OK. Uh, yes and no. All right, we'll uh, go with that. We'll try and mass add to that out in the next couple of months ahead. Um, if I could ask you a final question here, and that is about overall, what would you tell South Australians to today about what this means for, for your economy their quality of life, are they going to see a big difference over the decades ahead because of the knock-on effects of these projects? I think the answer to that question is yes, but it will happen over a period of time. So, you know, not too dissimilar to what occurred under the, the Playford government all those years ago when, when he took South Australia from being an, an agricultural economy in the 30s and 40s and, and turned it into a manufacturing powerhouse. That took a lot of South Australians back then um, into the middle class, into a more prosperous middle class. I, this project represents a, a step change opportunity to do the same again by improving our economic complexity and the flow on and ancillary benefits that result from that throughout the economy is a big deal indeed. Again, I simply point out that these are the most complex machines that have ever been produced in the history of the world. We're going to be building them here in Adelaide, not too dissimilar how we're building satellites here in Adelaide. And all of that means more skills, which brings with it more remuneration and more security of employment, and that of course means a better standard of living. And not every single South Australian of course is going to be working on these projects, but their children will have the opportunity to do so and be part of a society that is lifted up as a whole as a result. We just need to get on with that task, acknowledge it's a long-term program, not be impatient about it, but have the resolve make the investments today that are required. But Premier, what are you going to do to make sure that there are knock-on effects to that when you have uh, such a base here? It's certainly, uh, and you know, you're uplifting um, skills to this particular industry. Um, you've got a massive space industry uh, there in South Australia. Um, you're pushing tech. I mean, is that your vision, that it kind of becomes the, the Silicon Valley tech hub of Australia? Yes, orientated around specific industries uh, like uh, space, defence and cyber. That's where there is a, a lot of opportunity. We've also got opportunity in South Australia and other major industries that are going through change on the back of decarbonisation as well. Potential of green iron production, facilitation, facilitated through the production of hydrogen, economic, economic price here in South Australia is an exciting one as well. So there's a lot to look forward to as a, as a state over the course of the decades ahead. But it just, it just requires us to, you know, do something that, as politicians, we often fail, uh, Laura, and that is to think about the medium and the long term, to understand that the investments that we're making in workforce and skills amongst our young people still in school today actually will make a material difference o over that longer term period. And that's what we've got to commit ourselves towards. And if we do that and do it properly, there's more than enough opportunity to ensure that everybody benefits. And, and that's worth being excited about and, and today's announcement is very much central to that. All right, twice in just a couple of days. Good to have you back on the show, Premier. We'll see you soon. I, I appreciate it, Laura. Thanks. Maybe South Australia's increasingly becoming the centre of attention around the nation, which is a good thing. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see if that lasts.